Ableton Live Stock Auto Tune. You heard me, that is right. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at Auto Shift, which is a brand new beta Ableton Live 12 device. Uh, it's not available yet, it should be very soon. So the device we're talking about right now is Auto Shift. And what Auto Shift technically is, is a real-time monophonic pitch tracking and correlation device. What does all that mean? It basically means that it's an auto tuner and it's got some pretty comprehensive tuning capabilities. We can lock pitches to a note, we can lock pitches to an actual MIDI note. We can manipulate the pitch and the formant. They also give us some pretty cool controls like low mids and highs, vibrato, and even some LFOs. So super crazy new device. So today we're gonna hop in and take a look at it, some of the new features, and uh, if we think it's dope or not. Make sure to watch until the end because I'm gonna show you guys how you can actually sign up to get these plugins early yourself. Also, if you're new to Ableton or you're just trying to level your game up, I just dropped a completely free Ableton Live 12 course. Uh, it teaches you everything about how to navigate around the interface. Pretty dope. That's in the description if you're interested. Let's get into the video. This is what it's gonna look like when you first open Auto Ship. So as you can see, just like any other auto tune or tuning software, we have our sense. So basically how far it's leaning towards one pitch or the next pitch. Then we have some notes so we can track which note it's on. I got bags on me like I'm moving now. I got homie. So when we press play, it's gonna show us this reading here and it's gonna tell us what note uh, this vocals resonating with. I got bags on me like I'm moving now. I got homies that don't talk it, they just shoot it out. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. So before we hop in and start tuning stuff, I wanted to note that this actually has the scale mode button built into it. That means if we're working with a master scale in our Ableton Live project, we can now just hit this button and it's going to lock it to notes that are only within our scale of our master project. So up here, we currently have the scale locked to D minor. Um, let's figure out what note this vocal is in before we start tuning. I got bags on me like I'm moving now. I got homies that don't talk it, they just shoot it out. We're getting a lot of A here, so I'm gonna go ahead and tune this to A minor. I got bags on me like I'm moving now. I got homies that don't talk it, they just shoot it out. So notice once we do this, we have these little indicators down here lighting up, letting us know that our root note is A and our scale is minor. So this little shift control down here is gonna allow us to shift this up or down in scale degrees. Anytime we see this SD here on any device, it's moving from chromatic notes to only notes that are within your scale degree. So we can crank this up or down. I got bags on me like I'm moving now. I got homies that don't talk it, they just shoot it out. And it's just gonna play semitones that are within A minor. When we unclick this smooth button right here, we're gonna start hearing more of like a audible auto-tuned kind of T-Pain sound. I got bags on me like I'm moving now. I got homies that don't talk it, they just shoot it out. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. Watching anime trying to escape a broken house. Strength is basically how strong it's pulling it towards the quantized note. So if this is all the way up, it's going to have a strong pull towards the note we're going for. And uh, if we decrease it, it's gonna be a little bit more loose. I got bags on me like I'm moving now. I got homies that don't talk it, they just shoot it out. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. Watch it. So this is kind of like the harsh auto-tune sound. Uh, let's kind of A-B this and see what we're doing here. I got bags on me like I'm moving now. I got homies that don't talk it, they just shoot it out. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. So as far as audible auto-tune goes, that's pretty dope. So a combination of decreasing strength and turning smooth on will make it more natural sounding. And if we want to kind of have those really harsh cuts, we're going to crank strength all the way up and turn off smooth. I got bags on me like I'm moving now. I got homies that don't talk it, they just shoot it out. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. Watching anime trying to escape a broken house. You can be who you wanna be, let me make it clear. And then the milliseconds, of course, is the smoothing time. I got bags on me like I'm moving now. I got homies that don't talk it, they just shoot it out. I know niggas talking. So we have three options over here. We have high, mid, and bass. These are not the frequencies that's gonna go through the unit. This is the frequency which it's gonna pick up the pitch from. So this is the frequency where it's gonna say, hey, use a dominant frequency in this range to determine the pitch. So the standard, it comes on mid, which is a great setting for most vocals. Um, if you're working with kind of a higher register female vocal, you might wanna set this to high. For what we're working with right now, I would definitely say, let's go ahead and leave it on mid. I got bags on me like I'm moving now. I got homies that don't talk it, they just shoot it out. I know niggas. And then over here, we actually have a reading of the notes and the sense. I got bags on me like I'm moving now. I got homies that don't talk it, they just shoot it out. It gives us a gain control so we can boost the incoming gain. I got bags on me like I'm moving now. I got homies that don't talk it, they just shoot it out. So this little L with these numbers down here is actually the latency. And this is actually gonna change depending on which three of these selections we choose. So if it's high, it's gonna change a little bit. If it's mid, it's gonna sit at right about 34. And then bass, it's gonna be high. I got bags on me. And then it actually gives us this control up here called live mode. And this is actually 
to uh, reduce latency. So again, if you're in a live session, we can go ahead and click this and it's gonna help us with the overall latency of the device. I got bags on me like I'm moving now. I got home. But again, it obviously affects the quality a little. So next we're gonna talk about a very unique feature that this has and that's going to be the MIDI section. So we can actually take an incoming MIDI note and set that to lock the pitch of the vocals. So down here we have a little melody and what we're gonna do is we're going to select MIDI on, and then we're gonna select our MIDI input, which is MIDI two track here. And now when we play it, it's going to lock to this melody here. Yeah, hey, yeah. I got bags on me like I'm moving now. I got homies that don't talk it, they just shoot it out. Yeah, hey, yeah. I got, p I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. Watching anime, trying to escape a broken house. You can be who you wanna be, let me make it clear. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. So that's pretty tight. It's kind of like the vocoder situation where now we can kind of lock that onto a pitch and work with that, or we can play it in live if we wanted to. Um, this is a cool way to kind of pair a vocal with a melody or to lock it directly onto a melody if we have the MIDI. So super cool feature. We have a couple options over here. Um, this is gonna be the attack time of the envelope. So how quick the attack is and then release. So when key latch is on this option down here, it's going to actually hold the note until the next note's on. Then PB is actually pitch bend range. So it's gonna be the range of the pitch bend. So right now we have this at six semitones. And then down here, it actually gives us an option to add glide, which is super cool. So we can kind of glide up to the next pitch if we wanna do that. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. Watching anime trying to escape a broken house. So right now it's set to monophonic because we have a single melody. We can actually set this to polyphonic and now we can put some chords in here. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. Watch an anime trying to escape a broken house. You can be who you wanna be, let me make it clear. Now we're adding some Daft Punk kind of territory. So far I gotta say, this is sounding like a pretty good tuner. And also not only that, but you can use it for much more than vocals. Ableton's shifter is pretty dope, but you can come in here with hit this. And now we have the formant and the pitch we can track and all these other features. So not only for vocals, but for instruments, like so far, I'd say this is pretty tight. After, you know, we select polyphonic, we can select how many voices. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. Watch an anime. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. So underneath all that where we see mod routing, we have some pretty cool options for actually routing some of the MIDI settings to adjust certain parameters within this track. Let's go ahead and put this on mod wheel. And now once we have our, um, now once we play this. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit. Nothing's gonna happen because we have to set the range of modulation applied to the pitch parameter. So that's what this little control is down here. Um, let's crank it all the way up to 12 semitone. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. Watch an anime trying to escape a broken house. So now in the mod wheel, I can go ahead and crank the pitch up or down. Uh, and we have a number of other controls here. We can, can also adjust the format. So I'm gonna map this to mod wheel again. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. Watch an anime trying to escape a broken house. You can be who you wanna be, let me make it clear. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. Watch an anime trying to escape a broken house. And if we map both of these, so both the pitch and the formant, now we have the pitch matching with the formant, which is a pretty cool uh, technique when pitching stuff to kind of keep it consistent. So I'm gonna map this also to the mod wheel and crank this to 12 semitones. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. Watch an anime trying to escape a broken house. You can be who you wanna be, let me make it clear. I know. When we're pitching vocals and we play with both the pitch and the format, that's how you can really lock it in and get like a realistic sounding pitched up or down vocal. So super cool that they implemented this in the MIDI settings down here. Volume, you know, we can, we can set volume based on the pressure, the velocity, uh, uh, pitch bend. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. Watch an anime trying to escape a broken house. You can feel who you want to be, let me make it clear. I know niggas talking, they don't know no. Maybe we can do some cool ducking stuff with that. And then panning gives us a little option here to pan left or right. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. Watch an anime trying to escape a broken house. You can be who you want to be. So overall dope MIDI settings. Super cool little feature over here. Coming back out here to our interface, the last couple settings we have down here are pitch, fine, and formant. Pitch shift, this is just basic transposition and semitones. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. So outside of the MIDI controls, we can just do this right here. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. Watch it. We can tune it fine by sense, so one to a hundred in each direction. A hundred being one semitone up, negative hundred being one semitone down. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about and the formant as well. So we can adjust both the pitch and the formant here. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. This little F follow option down here with this is, so this is gonna adjust the amount by which the formant shift follows the pitch shift. So formant frequencies are essentially resonance frequencies of the vocal track. 
So this is what I was talking about as far as the pitch and the formant coinciding with each other. Uh, that's what's going to give you that like pitching effect for vocals, at least that we're looking for. So if we crank this up, you can be who you want to be. Let me make a clip. I know niggas talking made on that shit about watch an anime trying to getting that like kind of DJ like octave down or octave up vocal uh, cleanly in Ableton warping setting has been a little tricky. I found that other dolls sometimes have a better uh, pitching algorithm for that. But this honestly sounds pretty good. So I'm pretty hyped that Ableton put this in here that now we can adjust the pitch and the format without having to buy something like Little Alter Boy or anything like that. So pretty cool. I know niggas talking, they don't know nothing about Watch an anime trying to escape a broken house. So aside from all that, they give us an LFO section. Ableton's giving us LFO sections on freaking everything these days. We can come in here and click on this and we can set all kinds of stuff to this LFO. Um, again, pitch, we can, you know, LFO the pitch. I know niggas talking, they don't know shit about. Watch an anime trying to escape a broken house. You can be who you want to be, let me make it quick. I know niggas talking, they don't know shit about. Watch an anime trying to escape a broken house. You can be who you want to be, let me make it quick. I know niggas talking, they don't know shit about. Watch an anime trying to escape a broken house. Crazy, yeah, I could see some people doing some crazy sound design stuff with this. We can set it to Hertz, or we can set it to the BPM of the track. And we can delay the entire cycle or adjust the attack. So when this is on, this is going to re-trigger the attack and delay. And when it's off, it's not. So cool little feature there. And we can just toggle this on or off here. So the last row of settings we have are vibrato, fade in, amount, and dry wet. And this control is going to adjust the speed of the vibrato. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. So we have basically a whole dedicated section here for adjusting the vibrato. Again, super dope. I know niggas talking, they don't know no shit about. And then we have a master dry wet control down here. So overall, like I'm pretty hyped on this. Is it going to take the place of Onteras? Probably not. Is it a super dope and capable Ableton stock? auto-tuning device? Yes, absolutely. With that being said, definitely look out for this when it drops. Uh, as promised, I'm gonna show you guys real quick how to get signed up to receive stuff like this. If you're interested, it's a super cool program. It's a beta program that Ableton Live has. So what you're going to do is you're going to come to the link that I'm gonna drop in the description down here. Ableton beta program. So basically you can sign up and beta test all these different things. Sometimes they'll give you like a brand new version of Ableton early, like when 12 dropped, I had it a couple months early. So that was cool. I got to kind of play with it a little bit. Um, they do these new devices and new stuff all the time. So you can literally sign up and when they drop like a new pack or they update a certain device or something like that, you're the first to know, you can try it and then you can be cool like me and make a video about it. So we're gonna come here, Ableton beta program. Um, the latest 12 beta is available, blah, blah, blah. Go to our live beta testing portal. So you're gonna click on this. I'm gonna sign out of mine. You're gonna sign into Ableton. So at one point they had you apply. I'm pretty sure they pretty much just approve everybody, but you're just gonna come here and sign in with your Ableton account. And they should send you a follow-up email pretty quickly telling you that you've either been accepted or denied for the Ableton um, beta program. One thing that I think is it does ask you for feedback and I would try to provide that feedback when possible. In my eyes, I think it kind of expedites you when the beta updates come out that everybody doesn't necessarily get, like not all the beta testers got uh, 12 right away. So um, anyway, cool little program. I'm going to link this in the description. Uh, that's pretty much all I got for you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.